Units of the Syrian army restore safety and security to several areas, kill dozens of terrorists and discover a new terrorist tunnel in Homs. Fiji says dispatching nearly 400 soldiers to join UNDOF in the Syrian Golan. Victims of the clashes around the headquarters of the Republican Guards in Cairo exceed 52 dead and 300 wounded. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Yara Dr. Korian from the News Center in Damascus. President Bashar al-Assad issued legislative decree number 44 concerning the allocation of no more than 10% of the number of scholarship defined in the announcement of academic scholarships in addition to a similar percentage of the scholarships given according to Article 19 of the Law of Scientific Scholarships and the scholarships allocated by the private universities in Syria to the Minister of Higher Education. A document proving the case of martyrdom should be issued by the Office of Martyrs' Affairs in the General Command of the Army according to the applied laws. In Homs countryside, Syrian Arab army continued to chase the terrorists and to destroy their hideouts. In Palmyra, in the Homs countryside, our valiant armed forces imposed their full control on the eastern area of the city after they defeated the terrorists entrenched there, who used the houses of some citizens as a base for their attacks on public and private property. The army also destroyed the equipment used by those terrorists in their crimes. During their operations, combing the farms of two villages in the Homs countryside, the security forces discovered a factory to make explosive devices and various kinds of rockets, in addition to communication equipment as well as stolen and smuggled medical compounds. During the operations combing the farms of two villages in Homs countryside, the security forces discovered a factory to make explosive devices and various kinds of rockets, in addition to communication equipment and stolen and smuggled medical compounds. In al Khalidiyah quarter in Homs, units of the Syrian army continued their advance and controlled the dispensary and a large mass of buildings where the terrorist gangs were entrenched. The army discovered a tunnel more than 500 meters long between the quarters of Bab Hud and Jurat al Shayyah. This tunnel was used by the terrorists to transfer weapons. The army also found drilling equipment and electric wires. Our forces strengthened their grip on several buildings after defeating the last terrorist group entrenched there. A sniper was detained to the south of the quarter where he used to open fire on vehicles and passing citizens. Syrian Arab army units continued their operations against terrorist hideouts in Aleppo and its western and northern countryside, killing and wounding many terrorists. A mortar cannon was destroyed together with various weapons and amounts of ammunition inside a terrorist hideout in the area of Sheikh Khudr that was used by the terrorists targeting citizens in a Suleimania quarter. The Syrian Arab army units clashed with terrorist gangs in several areas, killing and wounding many terrorists. The army carried out a series of quantitative operations against the terrorist hideouts in Aleppo's western countryside, destroying their weapons and ammunition. The army also killed and wounded several terrorists in the villages of Aleppo's northern countryside and destroyed their equipment. One citizen was martyred and others were injured as an armed terrorist group fired at a bus in Homs countryside. Military source told Sana reporter that the terrorists fired at the bus near the blanket factory between Qasr Nuaimi and Tal al Omari areas in Homs countryside.
Welcome back. Britain's historical sponsorship of terrorism is well known to everybody. Britain hosted many vicious extremist terrorists and gave them generous social protection. Surrendering the terrorist Abu Qutada to his homeland in Jordan came after a long postponement that lasted for more than 10 years under the pretext of investigations that led to no charges at all. Britain's hosting of this extremist terrorist is not strange in the behavior of the United Kingdom, which hosted many well-known terrorists such as Abu Hamza al-Musri, Omar Bakri Fustuk, the famous Chechen terrorist, and others, whose governments tried to bring them to justice, but British laws prevented that. Spain described Abu Qutada as bin Laden's ambassador in Europe and the spiritual leader of Al-Qaeda. He was wanted by more than 10 countries. However, Britain carried out an investigation that was the longest in its history without any condemnation of this terrorist in spite of his thumbprints in many crimes that claimed the lives of British, European and other citizens. Britain's endorsement of terrorists is contrary to the claims of the General Director of the Office of Security and Anti-Terrorist Activists, who asserted that the struggle in Syria has brought Al-Qaeda terrorists closer to Europe and in large numbers. The former British Foreign Minister William Hague warned against the possible return of terrorists to Europe after escaping from death in Syria. There may be something secret in the surrender of Abu Qudada to Jordan. However, it is certain that there is increasing concern about a phenomenon planted by this terrorist in the British public opinion. After the press and several British representatives warned against Abu Qudada, this terrorist is in fact a British currency that invaded the markets of many countries and it has become impossible to withdraw it from trading. The Orthodox Church in Occupied Jerusalem held a large mass rally inside the Church of the Holy Spalcher, raising a special prayer for the safety of the abducted Aleppo Archbishops Paul Yazuji and Yohanna Brahim and all the other victims of abduction. The rally was led by the Roman Orthodox Archbishop Atahanna of Sepastia. It was attended by several religious clerics on the occasion of the Sunday of all Palestine's saints and the birthday of Saint John the Baptist. Archbishop Hanna also led a special prayer in the Roman Orthodox Church in Nablus in solidarity with the bishops Yazuji and Ibrahim. Fiji announced the dispatch of 380 soldiers to join the UNDOF and the Syrian Golan, thus raising the number of its soldiers in this force to 562. The Prime Minister of Fiji said that the additional soldiers would be deployed in the Golan during the next few weeks. They would leave Fiji before the end of this month. This resolution has come after some countries decided to withdraw their forces after being attacked several times by terrorist gangs. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki reiterated his country's vision for a way out of the crisis in Syria by restoring to the political and diplomatic solution rejecting interference in Syria's internal affairs. Al-Maliki called on the international community to put pressure in this direction, adding that what's happening in Syria concerns first and foremost the Syrian people, so we shouldn't interfere except to help our brothers in Syria. Al-Maliki renewed his country's position against arming the Syrian opposition because such actions would lead to chaos in the whole region, including Iraq. Finally, Egyptian authorities closed the headquarters of the Freedom and Justice Party in central Cairo today after finding arms, helmets and Molotov cocktails inside. Meanwhile, Egyptian Health Ministry said that 42 people were killed and 322 others were injured during the clashes in front of the Republican Guard in Cairo. The Egyptian Armed Forces in turn announced that an armed terrorist group has tried to break into the Republican Guard in Salah Salim Street and to attack the security forces, killing an officer and injuring a number of soldiers, six of them seriously. Earlier, the armed forces arrested 200 people for possessing large quantities of arms, ammunition, knives and Molotov cocktails in the club of the Republican Guard. With this we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Genjan, but after a short break.
Good afternoon. The manager of the Damascus branch of the real estate bank stressed that the bank will activate the saving loans for citizens who have registered for houses in the general establishment of housing, as they will be able to get loans in order to pay for their houses. He added that people who got the houses by the establishment and paid half of the price can get the other half as a loan from the bank. Thus, they would be able to buy the apartment directly. The members of the Chamber of Commerce in Damascus were nearly 8,000 in the year 2012. The companies from the public sector were 14, while the companies from the private sector were more than 1,500. The Chamber asserted that it would activate the commercial and information exchange agreements and memos of understanding. Meanwhile, the Chamber has urged the traders to commit to the announcement of the prices, taking into consideration the quality and the specifications of the materials in order to relieve the consumers, in addition to selling the goods with the minimum price for the participants whose living conditions were affected by the current crisis. The Minister of Economy, Mohammed Zafar Mohabek, issued a decree that prevents importing natural and mineral water from abroad. He also asked the Directorate of Customs and Foreign Trade to work under the Ministry's decree, which includes preventing the use of the polypropylene bags for packaging grain and flour, since they affect the environment and health, and to replace them with the bags made of raw materials. The manager of the industrial cities said that the business carried out in the industrial cities reached 530 billion Syrian pounds until the beginning of April. He pointed out that the investment establishments are 200. He highlighted the changes that were made to the industrial zones by adding new choices for financing them and adding extra flexibility in sus subscribing for divisions and paying for them by installments. The director of the general establishment of sugar asserted that sugar beet that was marketed from Al Ghab and Hama to the sugar factory in Tel Selhab reached 7,000 tons since the beginning of the marketing operations. He pointed out that the marketing rate is going to increase gradually in the coming days, highlighting that the factory is manufacturing the marketed amounts during the current manufacturing cycle that lasts 85 days. The sugar production is estimated to be 27,000 tons. The head of the Union of Agriculture Chambers asserted that the border contract with Iran to export olive oil was a very positive step since there is a good demand for it even from the countries of South America because the Syrian olive oil is well known in the world for being of a very good quality. He pointed out that the exports of olive oil from the beginning of the year until May were 100,000 tons. He predicted that the overall production would reach 200,000 tons, 100,000 tons of which would be exported, while the rest would be enough to cover the local market's needs. Futures of the Brent crude rose above $108, registering their highest level in more than three months and continuing their gains of the last week because of tensions in Egypt, which raised fears about the international oil supplies, while analysts said that what supports the oil markets is the tension in the Middle East, which continues supporting the high prices. European shares rose following two weeks of gains for the stock's Europe 600 index. The US, in, the U.S. index futures were little changed, while the Asian shares fell and the Nikkei index increased 1.27%. Gold prices retreated for the third session due to the concerns that the Federal Reserve may start its stimulus program soon after U.S. better than expected job data were submitted. The spot gold dropped 0.2% after falling 2% last Friday and the U.S. gold futures increased 0.6%.
U.S. dollar index rose to its highest level in three years before the Federal Reserve Chairman speaks this week. Amid speculation signs of an economic growth, which will compel the central bank to slow the stimulus, the greenback touched a five-week high against the yen, whereas the euro held a two-day decline before the European Central Bank president speaks in Brussels and Germany releases data on the industrial production. Thank you for watching and goodbye.